As many as 40,000 Australians don't have standard sex chromosomes. The scientific principle used for decades that all girls had XX chromosomes and all boys XY isn't reliable. Are we just on the cusp of learning what determines gender? We really are. I mean, we, we, we are just beginning to understand this. And I think the more we go into it, the more we understand how complex this, this whole situation is. As I said, it's a, it's a very complex network of genes that, that operate in space and time. Christy North has always felt female. But when she was 15, she found out she was born with male chromosomes and internal testes. There was no mention during school, during hate, um, human development, that there can be mix-ups with your chromosomes. The scientific world is on the verge of discovering what really determines gender. And in many cases, how little it has to do with our environment. I just sort of grew up with scarring and things and thinking, well, OK, what, what was this for? Why did I have this? But I'm being told these particular things. I'm being told that, yes, you know, for this stage of my life, I'm a boy, therefore I must be one. Why, and... why did they make you a boy? Um, I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea why they did it. Australian law, too, is grappling with the latest science on what it means to be male or female. The federal government tried to prove this person was a woman. The last thing you want to be doing is trying to prove that you are the person you are to someone that doesn't know you, someone has no idea about your life, never interacts with you at all, has never met you. I know what a man is and I know what a husband is and I know what a father is and he's all of those things. Tonight on Four Corners, new and challenging science on the question of gender. What makes a boy and what makes a girl? If we relied on the common scientific definition of a male, that being someone with XY chromosomes, then Christy North would be a man. As an unborn baby, she was unable to process male hormones, so she developed instead into a female. The Melbourne woman has an intersex condition called complete androgen insensitivity syndrome. This is one of more than a dozen different types of intersex conditions affecting thousands of Australians. So there was nothing that made you any different from any of the other girls? No, not at all. Um, even when I told my friends, I only told a, a few friends, um, but they had no idea. My way of thinking is that she was always intended to be a girl, but she just got there by a different path. And that, that I think, is a fundamentally different way of thinking. Instead of the negative way, which sa says this is a boy who didn't make it, uh, this is a girl, uh, you know, who did make it and was meant to make it this way, but life was just meant to be also a little different. Many of these XY women are tall and beautiful. There are rumours that some actors and models have the condition. It often produces women with little body hair and clear skin. It's something that I have. It's not something that I think about on a daily basis. I think about it occasionally and I mentioned, like if I mention it to a friends or a prospective boyfriend or something like that, that's the only time it ever gets mentioned or brought up. What has it meant for Christy to have XY chromosomes? Uh, I think she's, she's happy. I, I think she's happy. I don't think it's worried her at all. Um, she's never really complained or um, she's just a normal, oh well, a normal girl, you know, into the hair, coloured hair. Makeup, you name it, <laughs> she's into the latest fashions. When Christy North was two years old, she went into hospital for a hernia operation. Internal testes were discovered, and Christy was later diagnosed with androgen insensitivity syndrome. She was born with testes that are capable of making the male sex hormone testosterone. Her body is unable to respond in any way to that hormone. 
because the receptors in every cell in the body for testosterone are absent. And the reason for that is a genetic alteration. When I was in grade six, uh, Professor Warren, or Dr Warren then, sat me down with my parents and my sister and we, um, we discussed that I was unable to have kids and menstruate and um, that was pretty much all that was said then. It wasn't until Christy North was 15 that she was told that she had male chromosomes and was born with testes. Would it have been in any way easier for you if you had been told everything at the beginning? Well, yeah. Yeah, it would have. <laughs> um, it, sort of growing up thinking that you had a hysterectomy or, or something like that when you were younger, it's not the case when you find out later on. So it would have been a lot easier if you knew straight away. So you actually didn't know why you're infertile? Oh, no, no. Every year, Christy North receives an implant of the female hormone oestrogen to help feminise her body. There's so many people with the same problem. There's more than what you think there is. You know, when you knew people that didn't have children, you think, oh, why didn't they have children? So we, now we know why a lot of older people didn't have children. It's because they had this problem and it was never spoken about. Like Christy, Tens of thousands of Australians don't have standard sex chromosomes. As well as girls with XY chromosomes, one in 500 boys are born with a double XX as well as a Y. Most have standard genitalia and are unaware of their chromosomal makeup until they try to father children and discover they're infertile. So what does a situation like yours, having XY chromosomes, say about the gender spectrum? Well, it's never all one or the other. It's um, one in 500 people has a chromosome variation of some sort. So it's, it's not uncommon. Most scientists believe we're just on the verge of learning what makes us male and female. And they believe one way to better understand this is through the study of those on the gender extremes. I think throughout history, um, humans have been really interested in what makes us male or female. And underlying that is whether or not a testis or an ovary develops in the embryo. Until the 1990s, gender was thought to be largely about chromosomes. But this principle was challenged when a scientific breakthrough was made during the study of people with intersex conditions. A new gene and its impact on the development of male genitalia was discovered. A team of scientists, including Associate Professor Andrew Sinclair, discovered SRY, the gene needed to start the process of maleness. The rationale for finding that gene was that we could unravel the whole process and build uh, understand how you build something as complex as a testis. And by knowing all the different component parts, it's a little bit like putting a car together, you know all the bits. When something goes wrong, uh, you can pinpoint that and correct that if, if need be. It's recently been discovered that the SRY gene is also present in the male brain region of the hypothalamus, the same area where gender brain identity is developed. We've had some success in understanding SRY and how it makes a testis. We're now trying to look at what SRY might be doing in the brain. There is um, some evidence from our studies that uh, there are genes on the Y chromosome, which males have and females don't, uh, that make uh, at least rats more aggressive. And so it could be that there are male-specific behaviours that are carried by genes on the Y chromosome, such as SRY. Associate Professor Vincent Harley is now looking at a further 54 genes that have been discovered since SRY. These genes in the embryo are turned on differently in male and female brains, even before the organs that secrete hormones are formed. They may help scientists to explain why some people identify as one gender or the other, independently of chromosomes. I think